Did you know the library is full of dirt? Join us this summer as we get the dirt. <laughs> Discovering interesting reading trails. There will be trails about pets, music, monster trucks, and more. Today's Get the Dirt is about... <laughs> Someone you know play an instrument in the brass family? Today, when we get the dirt about music, we'll be getting the dirt about. <laughs> yes! Trumpets and the brass family! Sometimes trumpets play classical music. Do you remember what classical music is? Let's have a refresher. Remember last time we got the dirt by looking in the 420s of the library for a dictionary definition? Yes. The student dictionary says classical means excellent in a traditional style, especially of music. Here we can see where we'll find the dictionaries in the 420s. Let's look. Sometimes trumpets play band music. Do you know what band music is? Let's look in the dictionary to get the dirt on what the word band means. The student dictionary says band means a group of musicians who get together to play their instruments, usually brass, percussion, and woodwinds. So, what is the difference between a band and an orchestra? An orchestra always has a string section in it, with violins, violas, cellos, and double basses. A band does not have stringed instruments. Here's a sample of some music you might hear played by an orchestra. When a trumpet is played in a band, you might hear this kind of music. Wait, aren't those the same songs? Yes, this song called William Tell Overture is a very versatile piece and is used both as band music and orchestra music. The difference is that in an orchestra, you would hear violins as well. Playing a violin in a marching band or at a football game would prove a bit difficult. Trumpets also play jazz music, blues music, and more. One important piece of music they play is taps. This piece is played at military funerals and events to honor our United States veterans. The playing of taps originated with the bugle, another brass instrument without valves, during the Civil War. It was also used to signal the end of a day or a flag ceremony. Reveille is used to wake up the troops. Horns, then bugles, then trumpets have been used for centuries to herald events and signal troops. Now. I mentioned that we will be learning about the Brass family as well as the trumpet. Our first book today is about the Brass family. It is called <coughs> Brass. It is written by Daniel Nunn. Let's look at the spine. Is this book fiction or nonfiction? <coughs> tell us that the book is non-fiction. Here's our table of contents telling us about what is on each of the different pages. Brass instruments. The trumpet, 
clarinet is here. People play many instruments to make music. People blow brass instruments. Not all brass instruments are made of brass. People play brass instruments by making their lips buzz into a mouthpiece. People play notes by pressing keys called valves. Different brass instruments. A piccolo trumpet is small. It plays high notes. A tuba is very big. It plays low notes. A sousaphone wraps around the person playing it. A trombone has a sliding tube. Do you see the trombone here on the table? Unusual brass instruments. This alphorn is very long. This tuba is very big. A conch shell trumpet is made from a seashell. A didgeridoo is made from the branch of a tree. Playing brass instruments. Some people play brass instruments outside. Some people play best brass instruments inside. Some people play brass instruments for work. Some people play brass instruments just for fun. Making brass instruments. Some brass instruments are hard to make. Some brass instruments are easy to make. You can play your own brass instruments too. You can find more nonfiction books about the brass family in the 788 section at the library. Do you remember that the brass instrument called a trombone was mentioned in a book in the book? Let's find out what a trombone sounds like from our special guest. some differences between this trombone here and the trumpet. Now, if you'll notice, the trumpet here has valves you push to play it. Does this trombone have any valves? No. Also, do you see how long the trombone is? Is this trumpet very long? No. But, they both have mouthpieces like this. The mouthpieces come off and you blow into them. <laughs> and they both have big bells where the sound comes out. And they both have valves to get rid of all the spit after you're done practicing. All right. Our next book is also nonfiction. Don't know if it's just me, but I keep hearing a trumpet. Well, our next book is called Trumpet and Brass, and it's written by Paul Archibald. exciting world of the trumpet. As you will discover when you start playing, the trumpet has a unique sound, brilliant and beautiful. It can play very high and very low notes. These things take many hours of practice to master, but when you have worked through this book, you will have a solid foundation on which to build. The trumpet is a member of the brass family, like the trombone, tuba, and French horn. It is basically a length of hollow metal tube 
opening into a bell at one end and with a mouthpiece at the other. When air passes through the tube, it vibrates and sound is produced. Your trumpet should come supplied with a separate mouthpiece. It should be enclosed in a sturdy case as it is very easy to damage metal piece instruments. A mute will affect the sound produced by your trumpet. The shape you make with your lips when playing the trumpet is called embouchure. It is the basis of all your playing, so it is important to get it right from the beginning. With your lips in the correct position, you will produce sound through the trumpet, not by blowing, but by buzzing. Trumpets and horns date back before Roman times. They were used by soldiers in battle, for ceremonies, and for hunting. Early natural trumpets had no valves and could only play a limited range of notes. Bach and Handel wrote very high music for the natural trumpet. Franz Joseph Haydn was born in 1732 in Austria. His talent for music was soon obvious and he was admitted as a boy choirster at St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna. In 1761, he was employed by a wealthy nobleman, Prince Esterhazy, near Vienna. This post allowed him to compose many symphonies, string quartets, and instrumental concertos. A concerto is a piece for a solo instrument, accompanied by the orchestra. Haydn's last concerto was written in 1796 for the trumpet. It's one of the finest works written for the instrument. The trumpet, as we know it today, started to take shape with the invention of the valve in the early part of the 19th century. This meant that the trumpet could play more notes and not be restricted to just a few. Composers such as Berloy, Fagner, Ravel, and Mahler began to write more complicated music for the instrument. As the music developed, so the trumpet family grew, and instruments of different lengths, sizes, and even different numbers of valves were invented. Notes played in rapid succession can be very exciting. Rapid notes can be achieved either by double tonguing or by triple tonguing. If you say the word taka quickly several times, you will soon produce a series of very fast notes. This is double tonguing. If you say the word tataka quickly several times, you'll get the same effect, but in groups of three. This is triple tonguing. Trumpeter Whiten Marcells uses both methods of tonguing. The two leading players of the natural trumpet in Britain during the 19th century were two Thomas Harpers. Thomas Harper Sr. was in constant demand as a performer at, from about 1806 and played at all the principal concerts and festivals in London. Thomas Harper Jr. succeeded his father and became a big celebrity too. Both musicians played a version of the natural trumpet called a slide trumpet. In the Middle Ages, early forms of scales, or modes, were used by choirs of monks in Christian churches. The monks would sing just one melody line, with no accompaniment. By the 13th century, the music was sung in two or more parts. What we call harmony was born. Many modes gradually disappeared, leaving us with mainly the major and the minor scales that we recognize today. The jazz trumpet. Since the beginning of this century, the trumpet has played a leading role in the per per development of jazz. Great jazz performers include Bix Biederdijk, a cornetist who made his impact in the 1920s. Dizzy Galepsky helped to develop the style of jazz in the 1940s called bebop. In the 1950s, trumpeter Miles Davis 
developed a more calm or cool approach to jazz, influencing another great jazz trumpeter, Chet Baker. Here's a chapter book here you can check out from your library if you want to learn more about jazz trumpeters. This is called Little Louie and the Jazz Band, and it is by Angela Shell Medoras. How a Trumpet is Made Traditionally, all trumpets were handmade by craftsmen who shaped the trumpet bell by hand, beating it out on a steel form called a mandrel. The valves had to be cut to the correct length, then threaded with the holes cut very carefully. The lengths of tubing to connect the bells and valves together was bent by heating the metal and hammering it into the correct shape. Today, these processes are usually done mechanically, but there are some craftsmen, like Martin Lechner, who still use traditional methods. A mute is a device that is placed over the trumpet bell to soften or alter the sound. Three of the most common mutes are the straight mute, the cup mute, and the harmon or wah-wah mute. Here's the kind of mute here. You can see which one here does this one look like? Yep, it looks like a cup mute. The plunger mute and bucket mute are sometimes used in jazz music to give a distinctive sound. The trumpet is a versatile instrument used in many different kinds of music. It is heard in jazz, which was born at the start of the 20th century in New Orleans. It is also found in dance and military bands and provides one of the most distinctive voices in the orchestra. Its relative, the cornet, is central to the brass band sound. Did you know you could get a job playing a brass instrument like a trumpet or trombone? You could play a trumpet in an orchestra. You could play folk music in a band. You could write or teach music for the brass family or become a music teacher. Passing the music down. There are so many jobs and careers with a brass family. The military band is looking for brass players, and there's always a shortage of people who can play taps correctly. So keep practicing, and don't forget to pass the music down. Now, last, we'll read a book about a little girl who played trombone. It is called It is called Little Melba and Her Trombone. It is nonfiction. It is written by Katherine Russell Brown and illustrated by Frank Morrison. Spread the word. Little Melba Doretta Liston was something special. The year she was born was 1926. The place was Kansas City, where you could reach out and feel the music. The avenues were lined with jazz clubs, street bands, and folks harmonizing on every corner. All the hot music makers made sure they had a gig in KC. From as far back as her memory would go, Melba loved the sounds of music. Blues, jazz, and gospel rhythms danced around in her head. The plink of a guitar, the hum of a bass, the thrum thrum of a drum, the ping pang of a piano, the tremble of a sweet horn. Notes stirred and rhythms bubbled through Melba's home. She couldn't get enough. Music was always on her mind. She daydreamed about beats and lyrics. Music was on Melba's mind at night, too when she should have been fast asleep. Melba loved to hum along with the radio. 
Sometimes the music sounded so good, she cupped her ear to the majestic and closed her eyes. She especially loved Fats Waller with his growly voice and booming piano. The player piano came alive when Melba's kinfolk stopped by. While Melba pedaled, her aunties danced around the room. With all that music flying by, Melba wanted to create her own sounds. When she was seven years old, she decided to sign up for music class at school. What instrument could I play? Melba wondered. At the traveling music store, Melba eyed a long, funny-looking horn. That one, she cried. It's beautiful. A trombone? Mama Lucille frowned. It's big and you're a little girl. Please? Melba begged. Mama Lucia bought this shiny trombone on the spot. She couldn't say no to her only child. Melba beamed from ear to ear and squeezed her new friend. That night on the porch, Melba listened to Grandpa John play his guitar. This time, she had her own music maker. Grandpa John showed Melba how to cradle the horn. She tried to push out the slide, but her arm was too short. She had to tilt her head sideways and stretch out her right arm. Melba gave the horn a mighty blow. Honk. It sounded bad, like a howling dog. I'm not good, Grandpa, Melba said, tearing up. If you can blow, you can play, Grandpa John said. Now, stand up straight and blow steady. Melba stayed up real late and practiced hard and till she could just play a simple tune by herself. Even with her keen ear, teaching herself to play the trombone was no piece of cake. But Melba kept blowing her horn, getting better day by day. The cool brass of the horn felt swell on her fingers. Before long, Melba and her horn were making magic. She was only eight when the local radio station invited her to play a solo. Mama Lucille and Grandpa John were so proud as they watched little Melba play her big trombone. Hard times hit rock bottom in 1937. That's when Melba and her mother moved to Los Angeles. The long train ride took them five states west and worlds away from Kansas City. Melba's new teachers discovered that she was as smart as a whip. Her test scores were so high, the principal skipped her from 6th grade up to 8th. In high school, Melba joined Alma Hightower's famous after-school music club. Melba quickly became the star player in the club's band, the Melodic Dots. The other club members try struggled to keep up with Melba. Jealous boys called her bad names. She tried not to care, but way down deep, the names hurt. Melba used her horn to turn all those hurt feelings into soulful music. Melba's talent kept growing. She began writing music, too. Then in 1943, when she was 17, Melba was invited to tour the country with a new band led by trumpet player Gerald Wilson. Go meet the world, Mama Lucille said, and hug Melba goodbye. You have my blessing. Melba could feel it in her bones. The jazz scene was calling her name. Traveling with the band was a thrill. Each city, from Salt Lake to New York, was an eyeful of something new. Melba became a master musician. She composed and arranged music, spinning rhythms, harmonies, and melodies into gorgeous songs. And when Melba played the trombone, her bold notes and one-of-a-kind sound mesmerized the crowd. Still, Melba was lonely. She was the only woman in the band. Some of the men were mean. Others acted as if she wasn't there. Melba let the music in her head keep her company. Rough times came when Melba traveled down south with singer Billie Holiday and her band. Some white folks didn't show good manners to folks with brown skin. Hotel rooms were hard to come by and the band members often had to sleep on the bus. Restaurants didn't always allow, want their business. In the clubs, audience sometimes just sat and stared at the band. Didn't show up at all. 
discouraged. Melba almost walked away from her trombone for good. But Melba's fans wouldn't let her keep quiet. By the 1950s, all the cool jazz musicians wanted some Melba magic. Dizzy Galepsky, Duke Ellington, Quincy Jones, and more. They wanted to be on the bandstand with Melba and her d divine horn. They wanted to play Melba's music. Melba and her music trotted around the globe, dazzling audiences and making headlines in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. All her life, Melba kept her composing and arranging music, kept making her trombone sing. Spread the word, Melba Doretta Liston was something special. Do you have a favorite brass instrument? Did you like band music or orchestra music better? And did you notice how the trumpet is often used? <laughs> yes, for fanfare and announcements. Next week, we'll get... Until then, be sure to get the dirt at your local library.